My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach, put it in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Well, here's a question. Where the heck did all the sellers go? Did they just disappear? Did they simply decide to park the money in the stock market like it's some kind of bank fault? The more I watch this market rally all week with the Dow gaining 89 points today, S&P advancing 0.33%, NASDAQ climbing 0.67%, the more I think that's exactly what's happening. It's not that investors have gotten complacent. They're just being disciplined and resilient. And so far, that discipline is working, and the resilience, well, it's a wonder to behold. With the coronavirus seemingly contained within China, at least for the moment, I think it's worth asking ourselves, how could we recover so easily from Friday's meltdown? We've now bounced back harder than we fell. So what's driving the strength? Well, first and foremost, the marginal buyer of stocks right now is the index fund investor. Someone who puts their money into an S&P 500 index fund and then leaves it there. Everybody knows this is the smartest, lowest, effort, lowest cost way to invest. You got a diversified portfolio with some nice yield, big exposure to the largest companies in America. All right, it's not perfect. There will always be dogs. <laughs> However, uh, when their performance is too doggy, too terrible, they can be kicked out sell, and sell, replaced sell. by better companies. Buy, 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 buy. The sell phone Friday is quite telling. The Dow shed 600 points because of two types of fear. The physical fear of the actual disease and the economic fear of the fallout from the disease. On the physical side, we were worried about how well our government would be able to quarantine a disease that's been ravaging central China. Turns out, at least for now, uh, only a dozen people got through the net. And now that President Trump has closed the doors to Chinese nationals, I, I guess it's possible that could pretty much be it. Of course, we don't know how many students came from, uh, from Wuhan with the virus. There's a two-week incubation period, so the carriers might not even know themselves. Yet, they could be spreading the disease all over the place at this very moment. But one thing is for sure. These public health worries turned out to be a real bad reason to sell the S&P 500. The economic fears, though, that's another story. The companies that are linked to travel and hospitality in China, they are hurting. If their stocks are up, that's wrong. We know that supply chain problems have haunted other examples. Apple, own it, don't trade it. Uh, they're short, we learned today, 45 million AirPods because its assemblers can't get their parts. Apple's a lot going for it, but that's going to crimp their numbers, at least the upside. We see weakness in store closing from retailers in China like Starbucks, uh, Capri Holdings, Yum China, uh, Nike and Disney have said their businesses could be hurt. Some of the cruise line stocks have come down even as the response, uh, think cancellations, has apparently been pretty muted. For me, this is all confirmation that the Chinese economy is slowing, perhaps by as much as 1%. But China has injected itself with massive amounts of economic stimulus. So once this coronavirus is contained, the so-called China stocks of America could be fabulous performers. We're approaching it that way for action alerts with Starbucks. Said that today at the club in a conference call. In other words, investors are treating this slowdown as a buying opportunity for the stocks of American companies with major Chinese exposure. And it might just work. That's the second reason why you don't see many sellers. It would be very different if these companies had bad balance sheets, but they don't. So therefore, they can weather this kind of pain. Other than Yum China, they all have big cash flows from outside the PRC. Many of them are buying back stock at this very moment. And they might have the right idea. When Chipotle got hammered by its latest food scare not that long ago, uh, the company fixed the problem while repurchasing 10% of its share cap at very low prices. That was a steal. Chipotle stock has come roaring back, as we know from speaking to CFO Jack Hartung earlier this week. I also believe that many of these declines truly are temporary. Today, Tyson Foods reported an OK number and failed to spell out the possibility of a gigantic pork and chicken business in China. I thought their call was particularly poorly done. But that doesn't mean I want to give up on it. I think the stocks will buy below 80, especially if we catch some downgrades tomorrow and they take it to 78. I would like to take those guys out and explain to them how to do a conference call. But you know what? I have a job. Well, I actually have a couple of jobs. 
but it does not include teaching Tyson how to do a conference call. Tesla fell from a high perch, but then bounced this afternoon. The balance sheet could be fixed by a gigantic fundraiser, assuming it even needs one. Elon must not, might not need the money. Uh, but you know what? It's resilient. I feel the same way about the Fang stocks. They have so much money that they can be bought into any weakness, too. Like Alphabet. Remember the other day Alphabet reported parent of Google, and I said, hey, you know what's good? And everyone said, oh, man, that is so awful. It did make the number. Guess what? The stock's back to where it was before the bad quarter. And so-called bad quarter. And it's going to take that out and then some because it was actually a good quarter. You hear your first since 100. I've liked it. How is all this possible? Well, look, ever since the Great Recession, most large companies have been much better about maintaining clean balance sheets, having cash on hand. They do not want to get caught with their pants down again. The ones that occasionally try to sneak in with big debt like we work. Well, you know what? They don't even make it to the finish line. We hate bad balance sheets, and we don't lie. With clean balance sheets, though, you can feel much more comfortable buying these stocks into any fears of a temporary Chinese slowdown. Buy, 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 buy. And that's exactly what people are doing. Third point. We were supposed to have natural sellers that would weigh on the market every day. I'm talking here about the retiring baby boomers. You might have expected them to be ringing the register on a large part of their 401ks or IRAs at the beginning of this year because they've been up so long. And the virus sure sounded scary. But here's the thing. The boomers are stuck. Where else can they put their money? Short-term rate interest rates are very low. Medium-term rates aren't that much better. This is the fabled situation where the stocks are the only game in town. I know a lot of you hate that and think that it's just soporific, if not fanciful. Well, I don't want to call it reasoning. I can't call it logic. How about dreaming? But it's actually rigorous analysis. Short stocks have run. But you really want to put your money in the 10-year instead of just when it yields just 1.64%, when you got so many stocks that yield much more? Finally, as I always say, whether you love Trump or you hate him, the president doesn't want to see this market go down. He likes He's kind of like our money manager in chief, you know? In the State of the Union, we pointed out that $12 trillion uh, in, dollars in wealth has been created. And he mentioned that over here, mentioned the success since he was elected. That's a pretty good number. And returns on retirement accounts have been among the best ever. He gave, actually gave you some percentages depending on the manager. It's kind of a fun part of the speech. Truth be told, no president in my lifetime has shown this level of interest in the stock market. He's more interested in the stock market now than when I used to be a, a judge on The Apprentice. And he would ask me about stocks. I always told him I liked Verizon. It was better. Verizon, you know, no one ever got hurt recommending Verizon. Nobody. Trump wants stocks higher, and he's happy to do things to help them. He sees the success of the stock market as being integral to his re-election efforts, and he wants to be re-elected. He sees it as a judge of himself. That means he's got to put his thumb on the scales to boost stocks. I bet he'll do it. It's a pretty good reason to buy the dips, isn't it? The bottom line, look, flow of funds can be a fickle way to invest, but right now the market is anything but mercurial or arbitrary. It's redoubtable. It's implacable. It's resolute. To buy on weakness isn't a stooge thing to do. It's the stooges who don't do the buying. Aram in New York. Aram. Hi, good evening, Mr. Kramer. How are you doing tonight? I am doing well because I've got McCormick Spice on. Well, all right, oh, what's going on with you? Awesome. I have a stock called Funko. I bought it in May after you had the CEO on, on air. Yeah. And in, and in, in uh, September-ish, he sold about 2 million shares. And then now we, they pre-released earnings yesterday, and it looked horrible. It was and horrible. I was wondering what your take on uh, it. It was horrible. And we had, a lot, we had analysts go from buy to sell, and... It was horrible. I mean, that was, I don't even, look, I don't, that, you may Google horrible stock and you might see Funko. But you know what? Doesn't impact the worthiness of the product. All right, China's injected massive stimulus into its economy, which could mitigate the negative impact to U.S. companies based there and create buying opportunities for you. It's actually disciplined. Oh, man, buddy, tonight, Cigna reported earnings of the stock to soaring. Can the move continue as the 2020 presidential race rolls on? Cheap stock. I got the CEO. Then is it time to stop speculating on the coronavirus? Don't make a move before hearing my take. And China is McCormick's second largest market in terms of sales. So are we should be uh, concerned about how the virus has impacted stock. And I'm going to throw I'm bringing this back to the set tomorrow. The squawk on the street. I'm going to splash it in the eye of David Faber, as I promised. Stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. 
Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.